Rent or buy the home that you live in. Which option is better for building up long-term wealth? In today's video, I'm going to explore this question by using real world examples and showing you a calculation that I've done to compare the potential sunk costs of renting versus buying and also to compare the return on investment of either owning property or taking that money and investing it somewhere else like the stock market. Once you have a good idea of the different costs and opportunity costs and potential return on investment of either buying or renting a home, then it's possible to work in some of the other considerations like a psychological factor of wanting to own a home or the desire to have the freedom of not owning property and being able to just go wherever you want when you please. But before doing that, it's really important to have a good idea of what the sunk cost will be of either choice and then also to have a reasonable projection of what your investments might earn over time if you choose to either invest in property or to rent and invest somewhere else. To illustrate the point and to walk through an example of a calculation that I've used in the past to determine if I wanted to rent or buy, I found two properties in Ottawa, Canada that are in the exact same building. They're both two bed, two bath properties. One is for sale and one is for rent. So it makes for a perfect comparison. The property that's for sale is this one. It's going for 474.9. It's two bed, two bath, and it's in this modern condo style building. You'll see that it's at 70 Landry Street in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And if I scroll through the pictures here, you'll see, you know, it's just a nice modern style condo. Now the property that's for rent is this one. You'll see that it's at 90 Landry Street as opposed to 70, but it's actually the same building. It's connected with a walkway and it's exactly the same. So two bed, two bath, it's very comparable in terms of specs. And you'll see that this one is renting for $2,250. And if I just scroll through some of the photos here, you'll see it's got a similar vibe. So going over to this spreadsheet here, this is how I'm going to compare the sunk costs of renting versus buying, and then also the return on investment of either option. And this is what's gonna form the basis for making the decision after which the other factors could come into play. First, let me fill in the purchase details here. Like I said, it's 474.9, and I'm going to assume that I would make a 20% down payment because if you make any less than that, at least here in Ontario, Canada, then you get hit with other fees like default insurance on the mortgage. So assuming that the property goes at asking price, then the amount of the down payment would be around 95,000 and the amount of the loan would be around 380,000. I'll come back to that in a second, but moving over here to the monthly sunk costs to rent, well, there's only one sunk cost and that is what you're paying in rent. And that was $2,250 for this property. So this is the simplest part of the calculation. That is the amount of sunk cost to rent. And actually just to clarify here, I'm not including things that would be the same in either situation. So for instance, you would have to pay for hydro and utilities and internet, regardless of whether you're renting or buying. So I'm not going to include them in the calculation because they would cancel each other out anyways. I'm only going to focus on the things that are different in either situation. So now we have to figure what the unique monthly sunk cost to buy would be in this situation. And it's not as simple as rent. So there's a number of different sunk costs. Uh, first of which is going to be the mortgage interest. Now, when you pay your mortgage payment, a portion of that goes towards the principal. And over time, assuming that the value of that home appreciates, then that's going to be an investment, not a sunk cost. It's only the interest that you pay on the loan that is a sunk cost. So to figure out what that interest payment per month would be, I'm going to use this mortgage payment calculator. I'm just gonna put in the information of the property uh, and make some assumptions, like for instance, that we're gonna make a 20% down payment. And as you can see here, when you do make that 20% down payment, then you don't have to pay this mortgage insurance, which ends up being a pretty big cost saving. Then I'm gonna choose the amortization period. I'll just choose 25 years. And then I'm going to select the rate. Um, if we assume that it's a fixed rate for five years, you can get as low as 1.74% right now. So I will select that. This is showing me that the total mortgage payment would be $1,562 per month. But I have to separate out of that what amount would be interest and what amount would be principal. And if I scroll down here, I can see for the entire five year term of this fixed rate loan, then the amount of principal paid would be 78,000 and the amount of interest paid would be 37,000. So I can use that to calculate roughly what percentage of those total monthly payments would be going towards the principal and which would be going towards the interest. So by dividing the total amount of interest paid by the total amount paid over that five year term, then I can see that approximately 32% of those monthly mortgage payments is going towards the interest. So I'm going to take that 32% figure Go back over here to the calculation 
and I'm going to include that here. So the amount of the monthly mortgage payment was 1,562 multiplied by 32%, 0 0.32. Then we're getting approximately $500 per month in mortgage interest. Now moving to the next monthly sunk cost for buying this property, it would be condo fees. And since it's a condo building with shared services like a pool and a gym and snow plowing and things like that, you have to pay a monthly fee in order to participate or to partake of those benefits. And so that is a sunk cost. In this instance, it didn't say what the amount of the condo fees or what the property tax was on the actual listing online. So I emailed the real estate agent and actually just got that information separately. And the condo fees were $500 a month. I would put that in here, $500 a month. For maintenance, the next sunk cost on the list here, there's no real right way to do this, but I've seen as a rule of thumb that you could use 0.5% of the total value of the property as an estimated annual maintenance cost. And then of course, divide that by 12 to see what it would be per month. So that's what I'll do here. And it comes out to about $200 per month. Now, especially in a new condo building like this, I would not expect to have $200 per month in regularly occurring maintenance costs but once in a while something could come up, let's say the dishwasher breaks or you have to replace a fridge or whatever. Uh, so you might have from time to time a single large expense that might average out to about $200 a month. But in any case, it's better to have a line item like this in the calculation just to be safe because you are responsible for that. Whereas if you're renting, then your landlord is the one that is responsible for paying all of those maintenance fees. Next up is home insurance. Another sunk cost that you have to pay for if you own the property, but you don't have to pay for if you're renting. Now there's a lot of different service providers here in Canada and elsewhere around the world. So the rate that you're paying for your home insurance can definitely vary but I think it's safe to assume that you could get a decent insurance policy with decent coverage for $50 a month. The next item on my list here is something that I've called one-time cost to buy with a five-year amortization. So when you purchase a property, it has a lot of upfront costs that you have to pay. You have to pay for the legal fees. You have to pay for a land transfer tax. So all of these one-time expenses that you have to pay right when you purchase a property definitely are sunk costs and they have to be factored in somehow. So what I'm going to do is estimate the total one-time cost to purchase a property and then just divide that over a five-year period on a monthly basis because it's a five-year fixed rate mortgage that we decided to go for here. According to RateHub, this online mortgage calculator, the land transfer tax would be about $6,000. Then you have to pay a thousand in legal fees, then $500 for title insurance. And then if you did a home inspection or an appraisal, that could be another 600 to $800 as well. But if we're adding all of that up, then it's going to be somewhere probably in the range of $8,000 as one time one off closing fees. It could be more, it could be less depending on the property. But in this instance, I'm going to use $8,000 as just a ballpark figure. So the total for that monthly sum cost is $133.33. Next up is property tax, which is calculated on an annual basis. And it wasn't included in the online listing, but like I said, I got that information from the realtor who said that it was $3,850 per year divided by 12 months in the year. And then we're looking at $320 per month for those property taxes. We have our total monthly sunk costs for both renting and buying. And in renting case, it's $2,250. And for the buying case, it's $1,701.88. So now I'm adding this section down here, which compares the return on investment of both buying and renting. Now in the buy situation, we're making a down payment of 20%. So almost $95,000. That means that in the renting situation, we would have presumably that same amount of money to take and invest in something like the stock market. Then in terms of the monthly contributions on the buy side, it's just going to be the amount of the mortgage payment that pays down the principal because then we're building up equity in the home. And on the rent side, it's going to be the difference between the total payments on the buy side and the amount that we're paying in rent, which I'm going to calculate in a second. But for the monthly mortgage principal payments, that's just going to be the amount of the total mortgage payment, 1,562 multiplied by 0 0.68, which is the percentage of that payment that's going to pay down the loan, the principal. And that means that just over $1,000 per month is building up new equity in the home on the buy side. On the rent side, the way that we calculate the amount that we have left over to contribute to our investment portfolio is by adding up the two total amounts here, the sunk costs and 
the amount that's paying down the principal of the loan and subtracting from that the total amount that we're paying in rent. And that difference, $514, is the amount of cash that we would presumably have left over at the end of every month to allocate towards the investing portfolio. Now this is where some assumptions have to come into play because we're predicting the future. So on the rent side, I'm going to assume that all of the money is going to be invested in an S&P 500 tracking index fund. And I'm going to look at the historical average rate of return for that and just project that same amount out five years. Now on the buy side, I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to look at the average rate of appreciation of real estate here in Ottawa, where this property is, and I'm going to project that out about five years. For the S&P 500, if we're looking at the last 10 years, the average rate of return is 13.6, but if we're looking at the last 20 years, then the average rate of return is only 5.9%. So for this calculation, I'm going to split the difference and assume a 9% average rate of return. For the real estate side of things, I found this chart here that shows all of the average price increase of real estate in Ottawa, going back all the way to the year 1956. If I take an average of the annual appreciation of real estate in Ottawa since the year 2000, then we're looking at 6.28% per year. So that's the figure that I'm going to use. Now what I'm gonna do is use a compound interest calculator to figure out over a five year period what the return on investment would be of either renting or buying using these assumptions right here. And when I run those numbers, we'll see that the total five year ROI on the rent side is 187,476 and on the buy side, it's $204,542. So in this instance, the buy side wins. Now this is not to say that buying is always going to win out over renting. I think in this example, it actually does. And that's for a few reasons. First of all, mortgage interest rates right now are so super low that the sunk costs monthly of buying is really, really reduced. And so that really increases the amount of the mortgage payment that actually goes towards paying down the principal. And that makes buying much more attractive in this circumstance. But that is not going to last forever because eventually mortgage interest rates have to go up. They are absolutely rock bottom right now and they have nowhere else to go but up. As soon as that changes, then the calculation starts to look a lot different. And of course, also there's a lot of assumptions baked into calculating the potential return on investment in this case. Uh, you're not necessarily going to get 9% per year investing in the stock market and you're not necessarily going to be getting 6.28% every year in terms of appreciation of the value of your home. Finally, different properties are going to yield different results and sometimes depending on where you live and what your circumstances are, renting could definitely win out over buying. It really all just depends on the specific circumstances that you find yourself in. That said, I think that this type of calculation is definitely a useful tool to help inform that decision. And then of course, after you've figured out what the potential costs or ROI is gonna be of the one situation versus the other, then you should start to consider the other elements that come into play here. For instance, if you've always dreamed of being a homeowner, or on the other hand, if you've always wanted to just have that freedom to just pick up and go where you like, whenever you like. Because of course, the lifestyle element of this decision is a very important factor as well. It doesn't all just come down to numbers. Anyways, that's all for today's video. I hope you found it informative and helpful. And if you enjoyed it, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video and I'll see you next time.